I've received emails from hundreds of the viewers, expose them. So this, what we're doing today is exposing the truth, exposing what happens behind a talk show. Everything what you see on the channel may not be the reality. Jazakallah, uh, Dr. Zakir, for that uh, candid comment. Uh, may we have some more queries from the audience? Yes, brother. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam. Brother, Soha made a comment on the show saying that majority of the Muslims are represented by the so-called moderate Muslims or not practicing. And Brother Najib also added that they comprise of almost 99% of them. So how important is uh, the majority? And uh, do you think uh, that it really reflects or uh, is responsible for what Islam actually is? I disagree with the comments made by Saw Ali Khan and by Kabir Khan say 99% not practicing. Yes, he may not, he may be. If he says he is one of them, I've got no problem. But to say 99% are not practicing, I totally disagree. On the other hand, there may be many who are not practicing. But today, amongst all the religions, though on census form, according to statistics, the religion which has the maximum following is Christianity, has about more than two and a half billion. But according to statistics, the religion which is maximum follows Islam. The religion which is maximum practiced, it is Islam. Coming to your question, does majority carry away? No. If majority says two plus two equal to three, does two plus two become three? No. Two plus two will remain four. So it is not the majority which wins, it is the haq which wins. So democracy sometimes has a problem. In democracy, majority says two plus two is equal to three, and two plus two becomes three, which is not the case. So in Islam, majority doesn't win, the truth wins. So to know about Islam, if majority people say that Muslim means a person living in Saudi Arabia or a person living in, you know, maybe Lucknow, that doesn't become truth. So majority never wins, it is the truth which wins. So to know what is the definition of Muslim, you have to go to the dictionary. And there you find Muslim means a person who submits his will to God. So a Muslim is a person who follows the commandments of Almighty God and the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Yes, brother. Uh, brother, while the show, uh, Shah Rukh Khan made a comment about Salah, that uh, namaz jo hai niyat se padi jati hai, and he believes that namaz hamesha niyat se padi jati hai. I would like to have your comments on it and the importance of Salah in Islam. Uh, yes, I do agree that uh, Shah Rukh Khan had said that Salah is to be paid away. The niyat is very important. Intention is important. If there's no intention, then Salah will be like gymnastics. So I do agree with this. Therefore, I said many things he said was correct. Though he said it, that, you know, Salah is important, but Barkha does, as do you pray? So here, she even wants to expose Shah Rukh Khan. He said it's important to pray, but she asked, do you pray? And then he said that, I have to admit, I don't pray five times. That means when he made a positive comment about Islam, Barkhad that goes out of the way to expose him. And a person says praying is good, at least he's not doing kufr. See, a person who says praying is not required, then he becomes a kafir. Based on the hadith of Sahih Muslim, that the difference between Iman and kufr is salah. If a person does not pray and says it is required to pray, he's not a kafir. He's agreeing that it is a fard, it's important, but he is lacking it. He's not able to do the fard. So here, Shah Rukh Khan agreed that Salah is important. And his statement that Salah is paid with niyat is correct. But with niyat and also the way the Prophet showed us. So Prophet did say that niyat is important. Same thing with fasting. Without niyat, the fasting is useless. It will be like starvation. But with niyat also you have to follow the rules and regulations that you have to stop eating before the break of dawn, eating and drinking until sunset. Similar in Salah, besides Niyya, even the posture you see me pray. So Salah is the second pillar of Islam, after Tawheed, after believing in one God. The second most important pillar, that is Salah. Why? Because Salah, as I say, is a programming towards righteousness. It keeps you on the right track and that is the reason it's mentioned in the Quran and several hadith that you should pray five times a day minimum. Hope that answers the question.
Any questions from the breath? Yeah. Yes, breath. Assalamu alaikum, Zakir. Wa alaikum assalam alaikum. This is regarding Kabir Khan. He said that I am a Muslim, but I reject all the rituals of Islam. But Islam is in my culture. So, what's your comment on that? Same thing. He says I am a Muslim, but I reject the rituals of Islam. So, how can he be a Muslim? Rituals means the practices mentioned in the Quran and Sahih Hadith. The person who practices Islam is called as a Muslim. If he rejects the practice of Islam, how can he be called a Muslim? He can be called a pseudo Muslim. You know, Islam is in my culture. See, the culture is different. Muslim culture is different, and Islam is different. Islamic culture includes the rituals. If you say Muslim culture, talking about the culture of the country, it is different. We're talking about Islamic culture. Islamic culture is part of Islam. So he says he doesn't follow the Islamic rituals, but follow the Islamic culture. I don't understand what he's trying to say. Is he speaking English? <laughs> A few comments from our website. We have Hasibullah Rahimi who says, I found this program a waste of time. Fayyaz Salafi says, well, it was completely a flop show, wasting our precious time, where Dr. Zakir Naik was not given an opportunity to speak for truth, to convince all these illiterate Muslims as well as non-Muslims. Shah Rukh and Karan were given every possible moment to speak for nothing. Faria Wani says, the show was more about Shah Rukh, Karan rather than Islam. That's funny, you ask about Islam to someone who himself says, I don't have much knowledge about Islam. Noreen Fatima says, I didn't like this program. It was nothing but a waste of time. Duration of the program was very limited. Plus they invited too many guests. Barkha didn't give chance to Dr. Zakir. I think this program was to discuss movies, not Islam. I don't understand why these so-called liberal Muslims don't simply accept that they don't have courage to practice Islam. They are interested in worldly benefits only. And lastly, Ikra Chuktai says, what a waste of time. Barka was really not interested in knowing about the Muslim identity. All she was busy was in cutting off Dr. Zakir Naik's comments and not letting him complete his point of view. How sad to see people with so much knowledge and education are still illiterate when it comes to seeking the knowledge of Islam. They are so very confused and very bad listeners. On this, may we have some comments or questions from the audience? Yes, brother. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum In this present scenario, as we see that there is so much of media deceiving, and every day there is a new channel that which is coming up by the non-Muslims, and they give a biased news. So how important it is for the Muslims to start their own news channels, and what steps is Peace TV and Dr. Zakir personally is taking to start a news channel? Please come back. I do agree with you that in the present scenario, having a news channel is very important. But you say, what are the Muslims doing for news channels? There are many Muslims which have news channels, but they aren't Islamic channels. There are many Muslims who own news channels, but maybe they may be towing the same lines as the non-Muslims trying to get a higher TRP, trying to present what is wanted by the people, rather than presenting the truth. So we have very few or hardly any news channel which would present the truth even if it would hurt them. A person who presents the truth as long as it doesn't hurt them is an average person. A person who presents falsehood for the benefit is a person who's not a good person. But the right person and the bold person, the truthful person is that which will present the truth even if it hurts the channel. So we require such channels which speak the truth and which present what is right. As far as starting a news channel, it is there in my agenda. When will it happen? Allah alam. Allah knows. Whether we do it or somebody else will come and do it, but there's a dire need of having a channel which speaks the truth about the media, or rather having a true current affairs channel. I wouldn't say an Islamic channel, because we have Islamic channels already. What we require is a true current affairs channel. We speak the truth, and if a Muslim has done some crime, then the Muslim should be condemned after giving him a fair hearing. That doesn't mean that we should only praise the Muslims. There are black sheep in the community. So if that Muslim has done something wrong against humanity, 
against Islam. He should be condemned. But at the same time, we should expose those people who are trying to tarnish the image of Islam. Allah knows best when and how soon would this standard come up. But we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he help the world have a true unbiased news channel so that the world will come to know what is actually happening rather than show the things which will benefit a few people. Our audience would, uh, I'm sure, be interested in this critical comment, you know, it's criticizing uh, Dr. Zakir for going on this TV talk show. Is Dr. Javed Iqbal Bhatt. He writes in a newspaper article on the topic, the problem of being Nike. He says, Dr. Zakir's approach to debates and discussions is not only harmful to him, but also to his avid followers. Of all the errors made by the eminent Islamic scholar, Dr. Zakir Naik, none is perhaps more embarrassing. Some tend to replace embarrassing with serious, that his rash decision to enter into a studio of the NDTV. Even the little which he expressed was edited, broken and clipped to fit in with the scheme of We the People. Sandwiched between a temptingly clad Soha Ali Khan and a vice chancellor of the Jamia Milia Islamia, he was a piteous picture. The chapter this was that heartthrob with phenomenal memory ended up loosening the screws of his millions of fans. Next time you tune into Peace TV, a cornered Zakir of the NDTV would flash in the mind. It was a serious error of judgment because he was pathetically unprepared. He seemed to have entered to deliver a sermon. A sermon is different from a debate. When everything else is snapped away, a sermon is a monologue. One person is permitted to speak without interruption. And similar comments from Dr. Javed. Uh, we would like Dr. Zakir to throw more light on this critic. This is a comment that was earlier given in Amanullah, somewhat similar, but in a more lighter vein than Dr. Javed that, you know, you should be more prepared, etc. I'm a man of the media and giving talks, having lectures, having debates is my profession. And I've trained many people. But again, what I would like to say, which I said earlier, that he himself was contradicting Dr. Javed when he says that Dr. Zakir Naik, he showed a pitiable picture and what he spoke was edited. So when he agrees, that there is injustice done in the editing. How can he blame me? So what he should have said that Dr. Zakir Naik did not realize that he would be edited or something like that would be much better. When he realized that these things are going to be edited, even if we get an expert, as I said earlier, even if we get an expert who's well-versed in answering, if the intention of the moderator and the producer is evil and unjust and dishonest, the expert also cannot do anything. So the reason we appear, as I said, we didn't realize that the producer of this show, I don't know who it is, and the moderator would go to such limits in editing and not giving an opportunity for me to speak. Based on this, as is the policy that I have, as far as the viewers are concerned, I thought that would be the case. I thought. But when I downloaded the views of the fans, as I mentioned earlier, I thought what Dr. Javed thought, that maybe, you know, the people would feel very sad. But when I downloaded the views of the people from the website of NDTV, Facebook, and the other websites, I realized that two-thirds were in my favor. It was rather exposing Barkhadat. And what you're reading now, everything is there. It's not only the positive ones are being said, even the negative ones are being said. So more than two-thirds have either realized or maybe these are the people who know the media well and realize it wasn't given. And there were some who appreciated her, the way she handled, not knowing the scenario. So what I say that those people, whenever they see any TV talk show, they should realize that talk shows per se, they are manipulative. What they do, that they either get a person who has less knowledge on that subject. So if it's the topic on Islam, they get a person who has no knowledge about Islam. And then he does the job, the moderator need not use the skills. Or on the other hand, they get a person who's famous and they cut him down. 
don't give a proper chance, like what Barak Hadar did. Besides all these comments, besides interjecting me for more than 12 times, there is a way how a moderator knows when is the best time to ask a person. If you realized, when she started the show, she first asked Shah Rukh Khan a question. Then she kept on asking other people. She asked me second last or third last. Why? Because in the beginning of the show, the later you ask the person, the better it is. But when she ended the show and she said, now we'll have the final comments from the panelist, the first person she asked was me. Why? Because the first person you asked, his remarks would remain the least in the mind of the audience. So these things are well known by us, but we cannot do anything. And that's the reason I think Javed Iqbal was impressed by Barkhadat. And that's how he did these comments. And even in that last final comment, she asked me a comment, and I go to make a point that the Muslims should know how to answer the media. And I said that if you notice the incidents recently that came last month about the bomb blast that took place in Pune, in German bakery, where about nine people were killed, it came as headlines. And suspect Muslims, suspect, mind you. And the same day, the Maoist, they killed 16 policemen. Proven by Maoist, no suspect. It either comes as news briefs or it comes on the front page below. Immediately, Barakadat interjected, no, even that came as headline, and she passed on, without allowing me to complain. She knew very well the point was so strong, so strong. Even if it came on the front page, in most of the paper, including Times of India, the headline was, nine people killed in German bakery in Pune, suspects Muslims. Below in the front page, Maoist killed 16 policemen. Now, planning to kill one policeman is a bigger news than general innocent nine citizens of India being killed. Killing one policeman who is supposed to uphold the law in the country is a bigger news than killing general pedestrians on the street, nine. And that also here, the person who has done that is known, confirmed. The news article is small. The German bakery, both are terrorist attacks. So she didn't allow me to complete knowing very well that this point is very strong. No, even that came as headline, finish. So does it mean that she's asking me and she's not allowing me to complete? So just because I made a very strong point, she cuts me down. And then immediately to help her, you have Kabir Khan interjecting. So that means she didn't allow me to give the final comments. I spoke for less than 17 seconds. So as I told you, the steering wheel is in the hands of the moderator. So here, but people realized many a time. So for intelligent people who know the media, we can really see behind the scenes. But for general laymen who are unaware of the media, so I think Javed Iqbal may not be well versed with the media. But if he knows the media well, he would have made that comment. Jazakallah, Dr. Zakir. Thank you for your uh, comments, which uh, actually turned the tables over on the understanding when it was half cut. You completed the other half. Uh, mashallah. I think the audience gets more enlightened on that. Uh, the next question from the brother at the back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. There were two females from the audience who were discussing about the hijab. Uh, first, a Muslim uh, female said that I wear a hijab and I will explain to those who are not wearing a hijab that you should uh, wear a hijab as a Muslim. But then a f Muslim uh, female, another Muslim female, she said that, that she will explain to her. That means she thinks that it is wrong. So she doesn't find it wrong that not wearing a hijab is okay for her. So what are your comments on this compulsion of uh, wearing a hijab as a Muslim? Yes, I do agree that uh, when uh, Barakadat asked this girl was wearing a hijab, and she explained that she is wearing a hijab out of free will, and then Barakadat asked her that if another Muslim girl does not wear, would you mind? She said, I wouldn't mind, but I'll explain to her. That wasn't taken very well by Barakadat, neither one of the panelists, the Najib Jung. Oh, see, that is counseling. That's the problem. That's the problem with 
fanatic Muslim, he said something like that. That's not the problem. That's the problem with the practicing Muslim. It's not a problem. It is the duty of a practicing Muslim. As I mentioned, Quran says in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse 110, Puntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat lin nas, taap miruna bil maruf hana munkot minna billah. That ye are the best of people evolved for mankind because we are enjoying what is good and forbidden what is wrong. If you do not enjoy what is good and forbidden what is wrong, we aren't the best of people. So Najib Jung, being a vice chancellor of Jamia Millia, doesn't know this verse of the Quran. It's compulsory duty. So he's saying it is a problem with such Muslims. It is the duty of every practicing Muslim. Similarly, that girl who said, that means she does not agree. Yes, she does not mind, but she does not agree. Similarly, when I said that if a person does not have drugs, and if I counsel him don't have drugs, then Najib Jung will be happy. Because the secular world feels the drug is wrong. So just because the secular world feels that the drug is harmful, and when I'm counseling a person who's a drug addict, don't have drugs, they're happy. Similarly, when I have knowledge of the Quran, and I know that modesty is important, and if you hear my talks on women's rights in Islam, that why is hijab required? As the Quran says in Surah Azab, chapter 33, verse 59, O Prophet, tell your wives and your daughters and the believing women that when they go abroad, they should put on the cloak, put on the jilbab, so that they shall be recognized and it will prevent them from being molested. One of the reasons for Eve teasing, for molestation, for the rape, is the way the girls are disturbed. Besides the rapist being responsible, even the girls and the ladies wearing such clothes are responsible. Tali dua se bachti hai. And I've given various answers. Time doesn't permit me to give a long answer. But if you see my cassette on women's rights in Islam, I've given the reason for hijab. Or misconceived about Islam. What is the reason for hijab? So a girl who knows this will really want to be modest. On the other hand, the girl who is revealing more than concealing. Why is she doing this? Even she knows that by revealing, more people will look at her. So she wants more people to look at her. She may not like being raped, that's a different question. But, you know, as I said, that she is responsible. So what we realize that Islam is a religion which has the solution to the problems of humankind. Most of the religions may say not to rob, not to rape. Islam has a solution how to prevent robbery. Islam has a solution how to prevent rape and molestation. But if everyone follows Islam, then who will go to the fashion shows? Who will see fashion TV? Who will see these movies? So it will be a hit on the billion dollar industry. So, so that's the reason this billion dollar industry, the media, is trying its level best that no one accepts this modest discord. And that's the reason they have such show. Because if everyone agrees with the modest dress code, then this industry would go in a loss. It's appropriate that we have uh, comments from Dr. Zakir on the attacks or negative comments received on the show. We have from non-Muslim brothers. One is Mahesh VK who says, Dr. Zakir Naik is a big fraud. Dr. Zakir, your comments. Fine, if I'm a fraud, where is the fraud? You point out where the fraud is and I'll accept it. Just by saying so-and-so person is a fraud, you tell me which portion of my speech was a fraud or which action of mine was a fraud and analyze it and if it is the truth, I'll accept it. But just making an allegation without giving proof it's not a work of an honest person. Modern times requires evidence-based allegations or keep them merely as allegations, not as statements of facts. Or well, the statement was a fraud. Yeah. Okay. And then we have another brother of a similar kind. His name is Girish on the website he has. Only Muslims are interested in the crap of Dr. Zakir Naik. If you wanted that, you can better watch it on YouTube or some other channel why do you expect NDTV to allow him to lecture and bore the rest of the audience? That you have to ask NDTV, why did they call me? <laughs> if they didn't want to hear my crap, why did they call me? As someone said, maybe to increase the TRP or to increase the viewership. And the first party said that non-Muslims aren't interested in hearing me. I'm sorry I disagree with that. For most of my talks, what we have in public, approximately 25% to one-third of the audience are non-Muslims. And that is the reason when you see in the question of the session, we only give a portion to non-Muslims to ask. And these non-Muslims, you can interview them, they have been living, and the non-Muslims know them. So it can't even be planted 
like the way they have in the talk shows. So that's how open we are. And even the viewership of the Peace TV, just for the knowledge of the non-Muslim, that one third of the viewers of Peace TV are non-Muslims. Not only in India, in fact, throughout the world, Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah, Dr. Zakir. I think the audience gets more enlightened on that. Any questions, if any brother here would like to put forward to Dr. Zakir on this? Yes, brother. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam. Uh, brother, don't you think we are showing too much discomfort after this program and making the skeptics happy with this? I mean, I believe that you can pull it off and you can make much many more opportunities after this. We ask a very good question that aren't we overdoing it? Isn't the overreaction by us to do such a show? We'll have many other opportunities. I partly agree with you. And that's what some people said, that don't do the show. But they were more in favor. So doing this show is not mainly regarding NDTV, this show, We the People. We the People and Barkha Dutt are insignificant for me. I do agree with you. Don't misunderstand that this show is done only about NDTV and Barkha Dutt. Impossible. If this is your analysis, I agree with you totally. It's a waste of time. But this show mainly is exposing in general, what talk shows are. That's the reason if you realize that the earlier 45 minutes, we didn't speak about NDTV. It is the audience which is asking me if they ask, I have to answer. So basically, NDTV per se is not what is important. It is to let the public know what talk show is about. And since this program was aired recently, we find many questions coming on that. What I would request is that even if public ask in general what talk shows are, it's important. So here what is it that we are having specific time on that issue? Though I have spoken about media, but normally when a person poses me a question to question answer session, the answer can't be for more than three, four or five minutes. Here we have a couple of hours to speak about it, post-mortem it, and discuss it. So it's very important that the main purpose of this show is to let the people know what goes behind the scene. And I'm sure, if you're not a man of the media, do you know that by editing, if I take your TV interview, and I take your comment, and I edit, as I mentioned earlier, you too would feel the slip of the tongue. Which maybe before the show, you weren't aware of it. Were you aware that a portion can be cut? You are aware editing is done. But even if I take your interview, you would be shocked, and you would think that it was a slip of the tongue when you say that, you know, if you disagree with George Bush, I'll make you feel as though you're agreeing. So these things, if examples are given, this is not part of the show, not part of NDTV. I gave a couple of examples of NDTV, but generally what happens behind the scene, so the main purpose of this is not overdoing it, is to expose the truth behind the TV talk shows. Jazakallah, Dr. Zakir. We continue with our displeasure, discontent, distress. These kind of comments continue, a few before me now. We have Shabbir Ghani saying, shame on NDTV and Barkhadat, such a biased show. Shumaila Siddiqui says, I mean, show. The show was useless. Sami Imtia says, I have and keep telling that Barkhadat in a program is always trying only one thing, that's to project herself. She is devoid of any intellectual material, nor do her show offer any intellectual appeal. Masroor Ashraf says, agree with you. Over the years, Barkha has hogged the limelight. She has become more arrogant. I'm starting to hate NDTV because of her. I hope Pranoy Roy is reading these comments. Nadia Jamal says, I was your fan till yesterday, Barkha but not anymore. After watching We the People yesterday and not letting the Islamic scholars speak, who hold a thorough knowledge of Islam? Let me clear the misconception about Islam. It is not the religion only for Muslims, but for whole mankind. I would advise you to read and do a thorough research before conducting shows on Muslims and Islam. On this note, we throw open the floor for questions from our brothers here. Any comments? Yes, brother. Assalamu alaikum, Zakir bhai. Wa alaikum assalam, Zakir bhai. Zakir bhai, you are a media man. 
uh, it would be interesting to know your perspective in, uh, on why the media, not only in India, but all over the world, takes so much pleasure in maligning Islam. What are the forces that compel these people to malign Islam at every given opportunity? The question regarding why does media enjoy or why does the media malign Islam? Because, as you are aware, that Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. And the reason they want to malign is because it is a very good way of getting high TRP. For example, you write a book against Islam, and high chances it will become the bestseller. Similarly, you have programs against Muslims, and your viewership will increase. Because today, Islam is the fastest growing religion. And that is the reason, the more the people malign Islam, these people who don't like Islam, they want to promote it. So that's one of the major reasons I feel that the media also loves maligning Islam, so that they can benefit from the viewership. Yes, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Khan is boastfully proud of being a Muslim. He even said in the program that every moment he remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this respect, what message, I mean, what advice would you give him so that his life becomes more meaningful for this world and the year after? And secondly, he happened to say that if his children, he won't want to teach in a stricter Islamic way. So, I mean, what is this stricter Islamic way teaching and then uh, what kind of values uh, may be imbibed in the children so that they, they get the Islamic uh, value in them? The best suggestion I can give as far as for a person who says that he thinks of Allah always, the best I can say is that if he reads the translation of the Quran, he said he has read the Quran in Arabic, he has read it in English, but if he keeps on reading Quran and makes it a part of his daily life, because the glorious Quran is the most positive book in the world. It's a proclamation to humanity. It's a fountain of mercy and wisdom. It's a guide to the erring. It's hope to those in despair. It's a solace to the suffering. And it's an assurance to those in doubt. I feel if a person is attached to the Quran, that's the best guide that he can have. As far as he mentioning that he wants his children to learn Islam, it's nice of him to say that he wants his children to learn Islam, but he's a little bit skeptical that not the Islam, which is followed by certain Muslims who he feels may be going to one extreme or one excess. So the best, what I feel, as far as the young generation is there, we should talk to them Islam with reason, logic, and science. Islam is the most scientific religion, it is the most logical religion, and it is a religion which has a solution to the problems of humankind. So if you explain Islam in the right way, Inshallah, the youngsters. And that is the reason today we find that the younger generation, they are coming closer to Islam even than their parents. Jazakallah. We have a negative comment from uh, brother Sabir Bhatt, non-Muslim. He says this on the website. Hello, Barkha. Religions are all antiquated. Why did you have to bring in a nutcase like Zakir Naik on the show? Surah number so-and-so. Give me a break. This guy cannot think on his own. He should have sent his gramophone record instead. Isn't it time for human beings to move on and on, away from history and religions? You can learn from them, but why to? See, more make them a cornerstone for your present-day thought. We have covered a lot of ground in the last 5,000 years or 1,400 years. Why are these clowns dragging us back in time? I was even surprised that Shah Rukh wants to call himself a Muslim. Sorry, makes me laugh. What is he looking for now? Possibly a vote bank? Why can't we just be humans? As far as comments that why are we going back in time and why should we call ourselves Muslims? Why can't we just be humans? But naturally, as I mentioned earlier, that to be a good Muslim, you have to be a good human first. It's like someone telling me, fine, why not pass standard 10? I'm talking about post-graduation. So passing standard 10 is like becoming a good human being. Being a post-graduate is like becoming a good Muslim. So the person only happy by passing standard 10, that's his choice. I want to be a postgraduate. So to be a postgraduate, besides being a good human being, I should be a good Muslim. I should submit my will to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to our creator. And if I follow his advice, that will make me successful in this world as well as hereafter. May we have some questions on general, you know, from our brothers here. 
uh, not necessarily on the talk show. I know it is uh, topical, it is recent, it is relevant, what we had on NDTV. Any other specific question you'd have on TV talk shows, we'd appreciate that from any of our brothers. Yes, brother. Uh, brother, I've always heard you saying that Muslims should know how to reply in media. And we all know that the Muslim celebrities and sportsmen, they are often on media. So what would you suggest to these Muslims to how to be interact? Because they feel like Inshallah and Mashallah is only Islam. While talking to media, they say Inshallah, Mashallah, and they feel very proud of it. So what would be your suggestion to such Muslims who are often in media? Those Muslims who are sportsmen and who are celebrities, they are in the media. I feel that they should take this opportunity. And I feel they should be able to convey the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, how it is done, it should be done subtly. Because if he's the sportsman, if he's a celebrity, maybe he'll be having many non-Muslims as followers. So this is a good opportunity where he can convey the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like he should get in his life the teachings of Islam. And if the person is a practicing Muslim, he will surely do it. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, it's a pity that most of the Muslim celebrities, whether they're sportsmen or whether they're in the film industry, unfortunately, they're far away from practicing Islam. So that gives a very negative picture of Islam. So if they come closer to the Quran and closer to practicing Islam, inshallah, immediately, they will feel that they will be good ambassadors of Islam. We have two quick comments from the website. Javed Sheikh says, look guys, I won't blame Shah Rukh because he didn't speak anything on the Quran and Sunnah. He admitted the fact that he is not a practicing Muslim and more work is needed to be done on his part. And he honestly said the fact that we Muslims need specialists, that's people like Zakir Naik. So he respected the ulemas and scholars, just that he's having his personal jihad to be a better Muslim. He didn't offend us like the stupid Kabir Khan or Soha Ali Khan. He was keeping quiet for a reason. We have another comment regarding the talk show from Ahmad Abdullah. He says, at the rate of Smart TS, well, if you go through details and a little bit of research, then you will come to know that 9-11 was well-manipulated massacre planned by American politics. More than 200 engineers and architects from America only have proved that, and Fahrenheit 9-11 exposes the truth through film industry media. And for more, you can go to www.911myths.com. Don't get driven by what big banners show you because what they have is a proper platform, but what you have is a brain to use. We have Zainab Ahmed 